Today, um, we're going to continue our conversation about uh, traveling waves in nonlinear PDE. And if you remember uh, the first lecture we talked about the um, what did we talk about? Yeah, we talked about um, viscous Berger's equation and essentially converting to a traveling wave coordinate, okay? Which is psi equals x minus ct, okay? This turns this equation uh, u sub t plus u ux equals c uxx into an equation just for v of psi. So we got an ODE in that case. And um, in a homework problem, essentially, we'll show how to analyze the ODE to construct essentially a traveling front solution. So we have in that case some value V minus and V plus and in addition some speed. Okay, I think we called it uh, S in the problem, but here we have, uh, you know, call it C in this case. You use a slightly different transformation in the case of uh, the inviscid, uh, in the case of the viscous Berger's equation, right? You scale this by epsilon, but in general, you're usually going to use something like this. And even if we hadn't had this epsilon scaling, uh, you would you would still have an ODE that you can analyze. It would it would you would just have more parameters floating around in it. Okay, so that was the first nonlinear PD uh, we talked about. So in general, we'll see that um, uh, phase plane analysis is is useful. Um, we didn't use that in the last problem. We you sort of in the homework are going to use just phase phase line um, analysis. The um, problem we're going to talk about today is the Cordovec uh, de Vries equation. This is another um, sort of canonical nonlinear wave problem. And the idea is that um, the Cordovec de Vries equation, or sometimes people call this the KDB equation, um, is an exactly solvable model of shallow water waves, which is sort of a classical kind of successful area in studying shallow water waves. Why? Because uh, people have oceanographic data, uh, people can, you know, create a water tank in a, in a lab fairly cheaply and record, you know, waves uh, on water. Um, that's one thing Mark Hofer does um, in his lab. Um, and uh, there's really a rich theory for these equations. Um, and it's sometimes called soliton theory. The types of waves that you get are often referred to as soliton. So what is the KDB equation? It just says that the time derivative of your unknown variable uh, u plus the um, this Berger's type term here for the non-nonlinear wave speed um, plus um, some additional term here. This is just a third order spatial derivative term. You sort of get it as the truncation or approximation to a more complicated equation for the shallow uh, water waves. Uh, essentially, you're saying the waves are short enough that I can make a certain approximation and remove some of the terms from a more complicated 
physically correct system um, that describes this. So um, this has multiple wave solutions. And um, the idea then is that in any particular uh, domain, usually you think about this as living on the real line and uh, being taking on positive values of time. Uh, you, you could have one wave here and um, another wave here. And essentially over time, so if this is like, you know, T equals T1, then at T equals T2, they may actually interfere with each other. So this one here coming from the back may pass through the wave here at the front. So essentially this one has speed C1, this one has speed C2, and let's say C1 is greater than C2 because of the shape of the soliton. This soliton can then catch up to this soliton and actually um, pass through it. So then at this time we have the wave with speed um, C1 and the wave with speed C2, it's passed through it. So you can get all these rich nonlinear interactions of the soliton solutions, depending on how you set the initial conditions of your PDE, depending on what's sort of forcing you apply. So this is why this is such a nice rich equation for experiments too, because usually those are manipulations that you can perform in a, in a shallow water tank. Um, so we just like to understand just preliminarily how you arrive at these uh, traveling soliton solutions. Um, and so as mentioned, as I sort of drew in that picture, right? You have um, faster waves that can merge with slower waves. Um, and pass uh, through them. Okay. Um, and, uh, and so in addition to that, this equation um, has an infinite number of what we'll call invariants, okay? So you can think of this like a generalization of um, energy, okay? So remember when we constructed energy functionals before for our linear wave equation, we said things like the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy is going to be invariant. In the case of a wave equation where you don't have any um, external forcing or internal forcing or something like that. In the case of the KDB equation, as long as you have free boundaries or something like that, there's a number of quantities that are invariant. I'll just give a couple that are physical. One of these, um, is the momentum. U in this case is actually meant to represent the, um, the, the velocity of the, of the water. And um, I don't know what I'm trying to draw there. I'll draw a little ampersand. And, um, u squared xt dx are both constant in time, okay? And if u is considered the velocity in this equation, then uh, u, u squared is like your kinetic energy, okay? So this essentially, this is assuming u represents a velocity physically, okay? And I, I won't go through the whole asymptotic reduction uh, from the more complicated equation to the 
to the KDE equation, but um, this is just to give you some context um, for what this equation is supposed to represent. For our purposes, we're just interested in having an onlinear PDE, understanding how to analyze it, knowing that it comes from um, some uh, physical system. Okay. And um, this is related to what's called the inverse scattering transform. So the inverse scattering transform, you can sort of think of it again, like a generalization of like, you know, Fourier transforms or other types of transforms that you might use on spatiotemporal equations. This is a very useful transform to use in the context of um, nonlinear waves in order to understand and decompose the solutions. Um, 